okay na no? okay just give me one, one minute let me take some let me take some water and then i will be back okay meanwhile you guys think of some more similarity there's one very important similarities between the two there's one very important similarities do plants also have reproductive organs think about this yes sir yeah yes sir they do they do have they do have a reproductive organ okay like in your previous class like uh, in your previous standard like in the standard 7th you would have studied about uh, or in class 6 i think getting to know plants there was a chapter by the name of getting to know plants where you would have studied about different parts of leaves different parts of flowers so you guys tell me what are the male and female reproductive part of a flower i will be back in just a minute let me take some water Yes, I'm back. So I was asking you guys about the male and female reproductive parts of the flower. Sir, yes. stamen and pistil. Stamen and pistil. Which one of them is the male? A uh, male is stamen and pistil is female. Okay. Um, is there any other name for pistil? Is there any other name for pistil? Sir, is that? Mm-hmm. Pistil is also called as carpel. C E R P E L. Okay, na. It is also called as carpel. Okay. Anyways, let us continue the class. In the previous class, we did learned about the female reproductive organs, right? Okay. The female reproductive organ, which we learned in the previous class, we learned about the various parts of the female reproductive organ. Like for example. in the last part of the class we were learning about uterus here i did told you that when the fertilization of ovum takes place when the ovum when it is fertilized so then it will be embedded into the wall of the uterus right now and it will develop blood vessels via the blood vessels it will develop connection with the uterus right furthermore Have a look at this image over here. Yeah, as you can see, why the placenta? Huh? All the why the placenta here umbilical cord will develop. Getting it now. So umbilical cord will be connected to the placenta, and thereby why the umbilical cord all the necessary requirements of the baby will be uh, given to this baby. Whether it, whether it requires different type of uh, uh, nourishment, like in the form of food, in the form of oxygen. and why the same umbilical cord whatever waste will be produced in the body of the child that will be uh, removed is that clear to everyone or not so many times in exam function of umbilical cord and placenta is asked not in this standard particularly but you should generally be also aware so the function of the uh, umbilical cord is basically to transport basically uh, it will be transporting the blood right right now from the mother to the Uh, to the child and blood will contain all the necessary requirements of this child like like it will contain food and it will contain oxygen also whatever waste items waste items will be produced in the body of the child that will be removed by the same plus uh, by the same umbilical cord is that clear to everyone or not yes sir okay so Mm. By the way, this placenta, this is the placenta over here. This tissue that you see over here now, that is being called as placenta. Okay. <clears throat> so let us quickly revise the different parts of female reproductive organ. Then we are going to continue further. Okay. So do tell me, from which part of the female reproductive organ ovaries are secreted every month? sorry i mean to say okay i should have said ovum i said ovary 
anyways uh, another question you guys answer the another question how many ovum are secreted by the ovaries in a month oh, one hmm. one so it will be secreted by either of them either this ovary or either this ovary okay then do tell me the ovum will travel to the uterus via which structure cilia why the cilia so you can cilia helps in it but the pathway through which it is going to it will go into the uterus that is fallopian tube or oviduct so ovum it will enter it will go to the uterus via this fallopian tube or also called as oviduct got this now so different parts of female reproductive organs have different functions right they have got different functions <laughs> talking about the ovaries what is the function of ovary so they produce ovum to produce ovum good apart from ovum it also produces some some hormones estrogen and progesterone estrogen or oh, estrogen and progesterone good progesterone. okay now okay by the way where you guys had written the function of ovaries now there add one more point there you add this one more point and write that each ovary would be around 2 to 4 cm in length okay now so each ovary is about 2 to 4 cm long write this point where you have written the function of ovary okay now furthermore do tell uh, yes mm -hmm. it is uh, ovum right no no i'm talking about ovary ovary or ovaries ovaries refers to a pair of ovary ovaries means two ovary when i say ovary it refers to one ovary it's singular basically ovaries are the ovaries is the plural of uh, ovary getting it no okay furthermore answer one more question after fertilization of the ovum would have taken place so then the growth then the development of the ovum will take place in which structure the development of the zygote will take Place in which structure of the female reproductive organ? So in the uterus. Uterus. In the uterus, very good. Okay. Also, the size of the uterus will uh, increase. Getting it? No, it will increase. Not this. Okay. What so are the functions? Increase. increase. Yes, but I am asking, what does it mean by the uterus increases in size? Okay, okay. See, basically, the size will increase, meaning that in order to accommodate this baby. For example, this is the size of the uterus. Okay, as the baby will grow, so thereby it will expand. So its size will increase. Here you can see this difference in the size. Like this is the size of the uterus when fertilization has not taken place and when the baby has, when the growth of baby hasn't started. but when the growth of the baby has started it has grown to this much in size getting what i'm trying to say yes okay so uh, diff so, yes uh yes, so yes. they basically say that uh, the mothers carry the child in the womb so hmm. basically the uterus means the womb hmm uterus basically means womb womb i mean to say okay na no? uterus so basically means out? yes Uh, so basically, um, many um, I mean, number of sperm cells will be released into the vagina, right? So mm -hmm. basically, like, what about all the other ones? Uh, you said that only one sperm cell will be fused with mm -hmm. one ovum one or ovum. ova. Hmm. Yeah. So, like, what about the rest of the sperm cells? Rest of the rest of the sperm cells will die simply. Okay, now, out of million sperm cells, only one sperm cell fertilizes the ovum. getting it out of million so, only one fertilizes the fertilizes it so yes, there is uh, no chance of two uh, sperm cells going and getting fused with one ova no that doesn't happen but the zygote sometime it will split into two halves and will lead to the growth of 
twin babies twin. Yes. getting it now okay so then how at a single time we see that uh, two babies are born how is it how does that happen that many times a woman will be giving birth to more than one or child yes that is also one one question so in that case in that case if uh, yeah actually in chakrika what you were saying that in that case what would be happening now uh, like when a woman gives birth to more than one child so that is like a multiple pregnancy that is multiple pregnancy so yes it actually uh, actually happens in some rare cases happens not very not very usual right now but many many um, um, women would be giving birth to two childs even more than two childs at the same time so that happens if more than one egg will be fertilized okay so no? is it it's still possible for the kids to be still same like same looking as in like physical features okay yeah see if two ovum cells are fertilized let me just take one slide over here uh, yeah we have say that this is a sperm cell okay this is an ovum what happens this sperm fertilizes it fuses with it fertilization has taken place so thereby the zygote will grow and it will lead to a growth of a normal baby for example now in some cases what will happen a sperm fuses with the ovum sometime what will happen it might split into two half and will grow into it will grow into two embryos this zygote will split try to understand the zygote would split and thereby it will lead to birth of uh, growth of twins two identical children some cases in some cases what will happen two sperms can fert uh, can fertilize with two ovums if that happens that two ovums are fertilized if more than one egg is fertilized in some rare cases so thereby it will lead to growth of it will lead to development of two zygotes and hence two babies is that clear to everyone or not yes sir yes right sir yes. okay now so two or more eggs can be fertilized by the different sperms at the same time this can happen when this will happen when more than one egg will be released from the ovary in a single month usually in a single month only one or one ovum is yeah. guys just give me one minute just give me one minute okay now i'm i'm having a call from uh, from a uh, just one moment sorry about the interruption uh, actually i had to book an appointment with a doctor so there by his came his call came anyways so where were we at we were discussing about different cases of fertilization right now so we will be discussing that once more in detail when we go to the topic fertilization okay now let us quickly revise so these things which, which we have learned okay you guys tell me what are the functions of estrogen and progesterone are they directly involved in the process of reproduction or do they uh, or are they not directly involved in the process of reproduction tell me so they are not directly involved that basically means for hmm. secondary sexual characteristics hmm. so they are responsible for bringing about secondary sexual characteristics right now so for example uh, growth of muscles in the body hum, 
uh, growth of uh, development of breast uh, growth of hairs in the pubic region in the armpit regions etc so that is the thing <clears throat> let us learn about fertilization by the way all of you are required to turn your cameras on in this uh, in the class by the way who has joined with this id roni r o n i Sir, that's me. That's Gauri. Or? Sir, repeat that's me. Ron. Okay. So let us learn about fertilization. Okay. So firstly, reproduction in animals begins when the sperm will be fusing with an ovum. So this simple process is called as fertilization. So here we have a ovum. The egg, this is an ovum, and here you can see that sperm cells are entering it. But several sperm cells are trying to enter into the ovum, but only one manages to enter inside it. The one which will be healthy, which will be fittest out of all, huh, which will be more healthy, it will be able to fertilize the ovum. It will be able to fertilize it. Okay, so the tail and the middle piece, all of them would be left behind, and only the head will enter inside the ovum. Getting it, guys, so far. Furthermore, what we know that this head, what does it contain? So nucleus. Nucleus, very good. And in the nucleus, we'd be having DNA yeah. as well. Good. So this is the nucleus of the sperm. Good. And this here is the nucleus of ovum. Now, further, you will see that the nucleus of the two will fertilize. It will, I mean to say, fuse together. So here the fusing of nucleus is also taking place. Right? By the way, nuclei is the singular of nucleus. Okay, now. No, sorry. Uh, nucleus is the singular, while nuclei is the plural of nucleus. Okay, let me write this over here. So these two nucleuses are fusing together. Got this now. So here now what have what has happened? The DNA of the male parent and the DNA of the female parent has also combined together. Or we can say that this had how many uh, how many chromosomes? It this suppose this is the nucleus of the sperm. So it would be having 23 chromosomes, and this would also be having 23 chromosomes. So 23 plus 23, that is now 46. So how many chromosomes chromosomes are there in a zygote? 46. 46. Okay, also we know that the um, sex cells like this sperm cell and the ovary, they are haploid in nature, meaning that they have just the half of the chromosomes, right? But the zygote would be having full, logically because 23 plus 23 here gives you 46. Also, this zygote, it's a single cell at this moment. This is a single cell. Furthermore, now it will start to multiply. It will start to grow. Got this now. Okay. Khadija, you read the given paragraph. <clears throat> so actually, I'm not that well right now. My throat is hurting. Okay. Anyone else? Shakrika, you read the given paragraph. Okay, so fertilization. Firstly, reproduction in animals begins with the sperm fusing. Then the sperm fuses with an ovum. This process is called fertilization. The nuclei of the sperm and egg combine together and form a single nucleus. As a result, the zygote is formed. Since the zygote is formed with the fusion of male and female gametes, the new individual possesses the characteristics of both the parents. Very good. So it would be having characteristics of both the parent, obviously, right now. <clears throat> so nucleus uh, fertilization, basically, it's kind of the more specifically, we can also say in other way that it's a union of the nucleus of sperm and nucleus of ovum. Can't we say that also? It's the union of the sperm nucleus and that of ovum nucleus. We can say that also. Got this now. Right. And here they are fusing together. Fusing, by the way, means basically combining together. And this type of fertilization that you see here, where 
the nucleus of the male sex cells with be fusing together with the nucleus of the female sex cells is the most primitive form of fertilization which should be found in most of the complex organisms most of the multicellular organisms right now furthermore this would be even found in some of the microorganisms some of the protozoans also got this guys <coughs> okay do one thing write down the definition of fertilization write till here as a result the zygote is formed give the heading fertilization and write down this definition So, so nucleus is the last part we'll be discussing in the organs of female reproductive right? part. Uh, the last part of the female reproductive organ. Yes, sir, it's uterus, right? Okay, uh, guys, uh, I think there were some parts left to be discussed. No, like uh, vagina was left to be discussed. That part was left actually, yeah? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, first of all, write down this one and then we'll be going back to that topic. Thanks for reminding. Okay. Sir, only underlined? Yeah, the one which I have underlined from here till here. Write down the definition. Okay. Okay, so we, we're going to be talking about that topic. Cervix, we're going to talk about cervix and then vagina. Then we're, we're going to be talking. After this, we're going to talk about menstrual cycle also. Also, this zygote, is it haploid or diploid? So haploid. No. Haploid has only 23 chromosomes, but zygote has how many? 46, no? 46. 46. So, thereby, that is diploid. Okay. Now, furthermore, this, this zygote will start to multiply. Right now, it, they will, first of all, write this definition. Then, I will explain that how it will develop into an embryo, then it will develop into a morula, then into a, a blastocyte, like that. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So will you fuse with the ova or ovum? Ova or ovum, both yes, are sir. same thing. Both are same sir. thing basically. Yes. I think so. Yeah, ova or ovum, both are uh, the name of egg basically. Both are basically female sex cells. Okay, now. Yes, ova is basically singular of ovum. Ova, no, no, sorry. Ova is the plural of ovum. Keep that in mind. Ova is the plural of ovum. Done. Done. Okay. So can you go back to the slide one? Just one more, one minute. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, furthermore, this zygote that you see over here, I will look at this image which I'm going to draw. Okay. Once the fertilization has taken place, So once the fertilization has taken place, so thereby, first of all, zygote would be formed. Okay, so zygote has formed. 
now later on the cells in the zygote will start to uh, will start to multiply right now so it will start to multiply and there will come a time when it will have like this it will be having a structure like this so how many cells are in it four cells right now so this is four cell stage right now and then now it is being called as embryo while zygote is a single cell embryo is having more than one cell getting it guys furthermore it will reach another stage where it would, it would be having eight cells furthermore it will reach two cells right yes no zygote doesn't have two cells here you have the nucleus of the two these are the nucleus of the sperm and the uh, ovum these two smaller circles they um, they represent the nucleus getting it what i'm trying to say okay sir okay hmm. so the fertilized egg that is the zygote it will first reach the four is uh, it will reach different stages of growth like this will reach the four cell stage growth then it will uh, furthermore the number of cells in it will multiply then it will be reaching a eight cell stage furthermore that will also be multiplying and it will uh, lead to a 16 cell stage like this it will continue continue like this and furthermore it will grow in this manner getting it there will come a time when it will ha be having lots of cells in it then it will be called as blastocyst getting it guys so blastocyst is that a stage of zygote development in which it will be having 32 cells getting it everyone so it will be having how many cells 32 cells you guys are getting now what i'm trying to say here furthermore this will continue to multiply the number of cells are going to multiply multiply and multiply and furthermore it will lead to development of a fetus where the slowly the different parts of the body of the fetus will start to become visible getting it now so at different months of pregnancy different organs and different parts of the fetus will be developing got this now like for example in the in the in the fourth week of the development of the zygote heart begins to beat the heart will start to uh, beat getting it now furthermore liver pancreas gallbladder it will start to slowly form in the fourth week that is after probably after 28 days getting it guys then uh, body parts like spleen that will slowly start to appear in the body then in the fifth week of the pregnancy thereby eyes will start to form eyes will start to form leg uh, leg would start to slowly appear huh? hands would appear blood circulation will begin in the fifth week week you guys are not required to write this down i'm just taking uh, telling you this thing as a um, as a general knowledge okay chakrika khadija alif yes. so it's not like all the parts of the body develops at the single time no different organs different parts of the body develops at different stages at different time period got this guys sir we want to write this yes this uh, repeat again. You want to write this? Sir, you have... want to write that? We are going to speak clearly. Uh, sir, uh, we want to write that. But, okay, uh, this this one. Basically. No, this one you, yeah. you are not required to write down. I'm just telling you how the growth of the zygote is going to take place. Okay, now. So here it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like this. Okay. Here there would be 16 cells. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, like this. So hope you can understand what I'm trying to say over here. Right now. So finally a time will come where slowly the uh, the body would start to develop like this. Getting it. And finally, in the ninth month, all the organs would have completely grown. All the parts of the body would have completely grown.
Okay, we are going to talk about types of fertilization in a minute. Uh, but before that, first of all, one topic was left to be discussed in the female reproductive organ. Okay, so as you can see in this image over here, in the first image here, so we see over here that right after the uterus, you'll be having a structure, there's a structure called a cervix. So we, the uterus, it would be connected, it, uh, the uterus, it would be connected with an opening called a cervix that will connect it to the vagina. So cervix is the opening of the uterus, which connects it to the vagina. Let me highlight it using different colors. So this is cervix guys. This is the cervix. Okay. And this over here, that is basically vagina. So cervix is the opening of the uterus, which will connect it to the vagina. Got this everyone? It is right down this. It is the opening of the uterus that connects the uterus to which I know. After this, there is vagina. Let us learn about this too. So talking about vagina, vagina, it's a muscular tube-like structure that is connecting with the cervix, right? So it is a muscular tube-like structure. that connects with the cervix. Another, another thing about vagina is that it acts as the receptor of the penis. So then it acts as the receptor of penis. Okay. After that, it's another rule is that it allows for the movement of sperms to the fallopian tube and allows the movement of the sperm to the uterus and then to the fallopian tubes. So it allows the movement of the sperms to the uterus and fallopian tube. See, about the third function of the vagina, first of all, let me clean this diagram. Just become a little bit messy. <clears throat> See over here. We learned that vagina is connected with the cervix. Okay. One of the function of the vagina is that uh, it is acting as the receptor of the penis. So thereby penis will release the sperm cells. It will re release the semen inside the cervix. Okay, inside the vagina and it will go into the cervix. So here, let's say these are the sperm cells. So the sperm cells will go into the oviduct. So from the oviduct, it will grow up to here. It will go up to here, not beyond that. So from vagina, the sperm goes into the uterus and then into the fallopian tube. And here we see that ovum would also be coming. Ovum is also being released at the same time. Getting it, guys. So thereby, as the ovum reaches here, so thereby the fusion of the sperm and ovum takes place here. Okay, now. So in majority of the cases, it is seen that the fertilization takes place actually in the fallopian tube. In some rare cases, it happens in the uterus, but the actual site of the fertilization is where it is in the fallopian tube. Is that clear to everyone? Yes. Everyone got this now? Okay. 
So that is the thing about it. If there's any doubt in, in it, please let me know. Okay. Furthermore, it also allows for the delivery of the fetus when the baby has fully grown. So thereby the delivery of the baby takes place via this vagina only. Right now. So it also allows the delivery of full grown fetus. So hope that is clear to everyone. Write down this, uh, the function of cervix and vagina, and then we'll be moving to the next topic. Okay, uh, by the way, in which month, in which month the fetus will start to move and hair will start to develop on the body, the, particularly on the head? It will be in the fifth month, by the way. Okay, no? So in the fifth month, the fetus will start to show some movement right now. <clears throat> by the way, in pregnancy, there's a term called as trimester. There's a term called as trimester. Getting it. So the growth of the baby takes place in three trimesters. Meaning that one to three months, that is called as first trim trimester. Huh? Four to six months, that is called as second trimester. And seven to ninth month, that is called as third trimester. You guys getting what I'm trying to say? That is the first trimester. This is the second trimester. That is the third trimester. So we also sometimes say that the growth of the baby takes place in three trimester. Everyone got getting this now what I'm saying? Yes. yes. By the way, why you guys haven't have turned off your cameras? Turn your cameras on in the class. Do let me know once you guys are done. <laughs> okay. Rooney, by the way, this is your second class, right? Yes, sir. Okay, you haven't had a trial class. Yeah. Okay. I'll do Did so you? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you getting the concepts? Yes, sir. By the way, in your school, which chapter is going on currently? Uh, sir, for us, in my school, uh, we are learning about metals and non-metals. Okay. Metals and non-metals is going on? Yes, sir. Okay. Everyone done writing this? Okay. Uh, we are going to continue the types of fertilization, but let us first talk about two very uh, a very important topic that is menstrual cycle. So let us learn about this menstrual cycle. Uh, see, uh, talking about men menstrual cycle. <clears throat> so menstrual cycle is basically it's kind of a series of natural changes that that is observed in the female reproductive system that would be occurring from the uh, that would continue from the first day of the first period to the first day of the next period. What do you mean to say? See, for example, see the thing is that 
like when human when females hit puberty when females hit puberty one moment let me take one more slide <clears throat> So I was saying that when females hit puberty, so thereby their body starts, the female reproductive part of the female body starts to pro produce egg, basically ovum right now. And that is a mature ovum because when they hadn't hit the age of puberty, when the female is a child of four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, 10 or 11, up to 11 years or up to in some cases up to 12 years as well. At that time, ovum is not matured. But when the female child hits the age of puberty, like 12 years, 13 years, 14 years, like that. So then production of mature eggs starts taking place in the ovary. And in every month, every month, one ovary is really one ovum is released from the ovary. So that indicates the ability of the female to reproduce. Getting it now. If, if, at, if at that time, if at that time, the ovum is fertilized, ovum, meaning that the, at that time, the ovum is mature and it can be fertilized. Getting it now. Okay. So this, this process that we are going to learn about, about the menstrual cycle, in this, the ovaries would be producing an egg every month that would travel to the uterus. That would travel to the uterus here. Okay. Let us understand what let us understand the whole process. So this is one moment. So ovum via the fallopian tube, it will go into the uterus. Okay. But see if at that time, the, if there is no sperm into the uterus, so thereby what would happen? The egg will not fertilize, obviously. Okay. The egg would not fertilize. Okay. Also, Whenever the ovum is, is about to be released from the ovary at that time, what happens? The walls of the uterus prepares itself. The muscles become thicker. The muscles of the uterus becomes thicker. Why does that happen? Because it is preparing itself. If in case the fertilization takes place, so thereby it will embed the fertilized egg and thereby provide nourishment to it. But what happens if the if the fertilization does not take place? So thereby this ovum will basically die and it will pass via the vagina. Okay, but not only ovum passes when fertilization does not take place, this thick tissue that has developed over here, okay, which is rich in blood. So this thick tissue along with blood and along with the dead ovum, that too will pass via the vagina. When that will happen? When the fertilization of the ovum does not take place. So if the ovum is not fertilized, the uterus will shed its lining. It will shed its lining and also the ovum will be dead. So that will result to bleeding in the females. Right? So on an average, the duration of the menstrual cycle is 28 days. And this cycle starts when the females hit the age of puberty. Uh, in some cases, it could be around the age of 10. It could be around of 11. In some cases, 12. It could be 30. Okay. So when this menstrual cycle starts, so thereby when this menstrual cycle starts, it is called as menarch. M-E-N-A-R-C-H-E. -E, menarch. Okay. And when the females reaches the age of 45 to 55 years of age, at that time, the menstrual cycle will stop that will be called as menopause. That will be called as menopause. Is that much clear to everyone so far or not? By the way, the topic is not finished. Lots of things are left to be discussed in it. Is that clear to everyone so far? Yes, sir. Yes. Is it the endometrium which will be shedding? Exactly. The wall of the uterus that is also called as endometrium. That will be shedding. Okay, now. Yes, sir. Okay. Also, this, this cycle, uh, it can range from uh, 21 days to about 35 days. Okay, no? It's not very exact that it is going to, uh, the length of the menstrual, menstrual cycle is going to be 28 days only. Okay. 
so it can vary from woman to woman got this so give the heading menstrual cycle <clears throat> and write down what i'm telling you to write over here <laughs> so menstrual cycle it is a series of natural changes in the female reproductive organ that occurs from the first day of one period to the first day of the next or basically what we have learned here that as you know that when humans when the females would be hitting the puberty at that time egg would be released from the ovary each month right furthermore you're going to write in this cycle the ovaries produce an egg so what is every month uh, which it is a series of natural changes in the female reproductive organ that occurs from the first day of one period to the first day of the next Yes. Sir. Okay, now. Hmm. <clears throat> so I was writing here that in this cycle, the ovaries produce an egg every month that travels to the uterus. Travels to the uterus. Okay. <clears throat> that travels to the uterus. Furthermore, if fertilization does not take place, one more thing we are going to write down. the walls of the uterus prepares itself for the embedding of embedding of fertilized egg but if egg is not fertilized fertilized then it dies and along with the it dies and uh, and then what will be happening the lining of the uterus that will also shed so and the uterus sheds its lining lining here basically refers to the the tissue and blood so it will shed its lining which results in bleeding which results in bleeding furthermore one important point you are going to write down that on average on average the duration of the menstrual cycle is about 28 days it is not a fixed fixed number of days it can vary from one female to another furthermore this cycle this menstrual cycle starts at puberty it starts at puberty at the age of about 12 to 13 years in some cases it could be even at the age of 10 or 11 years right now okay when it will start it will be called as menarche m e n a r c h e 
so when the female child experiences the first menstrual cycle that is called as menarche menarche is the beginning of the uh, menstrual cycle got this everyone the next point you're going to write down that this cycle uh, sir yes uh, for the for the duration of the menstrual cycle is about 28 days is it mean the time that the uterus takes to shed its walls does that it mean that the time it takes to shed the wall so see basically the in so, from yes uh after uh brackets what is what is this? which line which are you talking about this one yes sir. tissue and blood okay uh, after that let me just read this real quick. In this cycle, the ovaries produce an egg every month that travels to the uterus. The walls of the uterus prepares itself for the embedding of fertilized egg. But if egg is not fertilized, then it dies and the uterus sheds its lining. The lining which will be made up of tissues and blood. So this will result in bleeding. On average, the duration of the menstrual cycle is about 28 days. This cycle starts at puberty, basically at the age of 12 to 13. That will be called as menarche. And it will stop at the age of 45 to 55 when it will be called as menopause. Okay, someone had a question uh, regarding this um, uh, 28 days. Yes. Yeah, uh, please complete your question. Complete the question once again, please. Uh, so I was saying, uh, in the third last slide, it says on average the duration of the menstrual cycle is about twenty eight days. So does mm -hmm. that mean the u the amount of time that the uterus takes to shed its walls or something else? Okay, it's uh usually, usually, uh the, the wall will be shed. It will differ from one person to another, but usually it can take from, take few days. Getting it now. It will usually take few days, for example. It, the menstrual bleeding, which we say that is also called as period, usually it would la last from two to seven days. Okay, no? Some, in some, some women, the bleeding can last up to seven days. In some, it can last up to five days, six days, two days like this. Got this, guys. Okay, also the menstrual bleeding, the amount of menstrual bleeding and the number of days for which the menstrual bleeding will take place it will vary it will depend upon different factors it will depend upon the age of the female it will depend upon the weight of the female huh? or it will also depend if the if the females are taking birth control medicines getting it guys or if they are in some kind of medications yes what is birth control what is birth control pills okay okay so birth control pills are now basically those are the medicines that are taken in order to kill the zygote. Basically, if the fertilization has taken place, so thereby the zygote would be killed using the birth taking pills. So, birth taking pills would simply kill the zygote. Got this guy. Birth taking pills kills the zygote. All of you done writing this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, you guys understood now what is menarche and menopause? Yes, sir. Okay, Aleph, what is meno uh, menopause? Yes, Aleph? Sir, uh, the cycle stop. Uh, uh, sir, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm, I'm able to hear you. Okay, uh, the cycle stops at uh, age of 45 to uh, 55. Okay, and? And what about the menarch? Yes, Khadija, you tell us. Uh, Khadija, you. Uh, when the cycle starts at puberty. Okay, getting it now. Okay, also the the birth taking pills pills now. Basically, uh, it will contain different kind of hormones in it. Will will basically prevent the pregnancy. It will kind of prevent the pregnancy. Getting it now. So basically, it will cause some changes in the uterus. It will cause some changes in the uterus. Also, it will um, stop the release of ovum. The birth taking pills, it can act in numerous ways. If some women take birth control pills, 
So the birds take control pills. It would stop ovulation. It will stop the release of ovum. That is the first thing. Another thing so, is that so, it will. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take the birth control pills, does that mean you have, won't have the menstrual cycle? It doesn't, uh, yeah, if, if in some cases, like if, if they are taking the birth control pills, so it is seen that the menstrual cycle would be a stop, but taking birth control pills has got adverse effects on health also. Getting it now. Also, it does not necessarily mean that in every case it is going to uh, do so. So birth taking birth, uh, I mean to say that, yeah. Uh, the birth control pills are not necessarily going to control the uh, bleeding. Getting it now? Not necessarily, but it is in some case it is seen that it disrupts the menstrual cycle. It will affect the menstrual cycle. It can reduce the menstrual cycle. But also, birth taking control uh, birth control pills have got some adverse impacts on the health of the female also if they take it regularly. So that is the thing. Hope you guys have understood this. In the next class, you'd be learning about uh, types of fertilization, internal and external fertilization. I believe we need one or maybe two classes to complete the chapter. Okay. Also, all of you guys keep on revising the topics which we have learned so far in this chapter. It's a bit lengthy chapter. So make sure that you keep on revising what we have, whatever we have learned so far. All right now. Okay, so that's it for today. We are going to meet in next class then. Thank you so much. Yes, bye. Yes, Shreya, how are you? Good evening, sir. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good evening, good evening. Yeah, I'm also fine. All right, so let us continue from where we'll... Uh, for, uh, let us start the class. Just one minute.